is, is there are some other approaches that we can expand. Most of you now are using logic models. It's been one of the exciting things that I've seen for programs over the last decade or two is that we're now actually being more clear about what we actually think our programs do. I'm not talking about the activities, but I'm actually talking about the impacts of what we're trying to actually accomplish and how we do that. And in some ways, a logic model provides a very nice framework for looking at the metrics that we should be using for policies and programs. One, it gives us inputs, which is what the program resources are. Outputs are the activities that a program does. They're what I call initial outcomes, those things that should immediately happen because of what those activities did, the intermediate things, and then the long term. So the idea is not to think about it as that final outcome of what you wanted, but what are the series of things that are supposed to happen because you did those activities? I, and the benefit of that is the, the red identifies those things that are more in program control. Obviously, program activities are definitely in program control, but the initial outcomes are more related to the program where the long-term ones are not. So that you can see clearly more of what the program was supposed to, to affect. And the time frame is the opposite. Now, in, in pregnancy and infant mortality, the time frames are not long. But there's a lot that's supposed to really happen in those nine months of pregnancy in that year of life. And the initial and the intermediate give you sort of the quicker results of what is supposed to be happening as we expect those leading indicators to change. I really like how the quality improvement effort now defines and uses a similar model. But instead of calling them uh, outputs or program outputs, they actually talk about those activities as drivers. And I like that way of thinking about it. The idea is what are those things that can actually drive those initial outcomes we expect to have happen? Not that's what we do. But what is it that really needs to change to have that outcome take place? And then how does that lead? Now, my graphs show this as a linear trend and as single items all the way across. To be clear, we're talking about multiple drivers leading to more than one initial outcome, ultimately ending in fewer long-term outcomes. So I don't want you to think that I'm taking everything as that linear. But the driver concept is really helpful because it really makes you think differently than from the program perspective, but what it is that you really need to do to create change. And infant mortality, low birth weight, preterm birth, small for gestational age, really end up being what I call those long-term outcomes. And in fact, with many of your programs, you may not have the power or the ability to really see that difference in these outcomes. But if we understand that chain of events from the initial to the intermediate, to the long-term outcomes, maybe we don't even have to measure to document the long-term change. That's the umbrella. Maybe if we can document exactly that interaction from one to the next, we only need to show those changes on the initial outcomes in the intermediate where frequently those are better measured. Let's give an example. Um, most states have a quick line. The literature documents that actually smoking quick lines can actually help with reducing maternal smoking. So if you can't have a health education program or a, a, a stop smoking program in each and every prenatal clinic, the quick line can be an effective strategy. The outputs that you would want to see is how many of your smokers actually used or took advantage of the quit line? Not did they quit, but did they use it as a resource to help them understand their smoking behaviors and see what the opportunities are for change? That's where our outcomes in. We know from smoking literature that we should see changes in the stages of where women are in their smoking pattern to have an effect on quitting. Then we can look at the quit rates, which we know already from the literature has a documented effect on low birth weight and preterm births. So here's an, an example of how we can measure those through more metrics than just that final outcome. 